Let's talk about porn. All of them were addicted to pornography. I found myself skipping to like sex, vagina. Are you addicted to masturbation or are you addicted to porn? Oh. oh. Do you remember the first porno you watched? This is your daily catch-up. Who says pornos? Yeah, yeah I'm just trying porno, to be Western. trying to be vintage about it. <laughs> So the other day, we were having a lunchtime conversation about whether our parents spoke to us about pornography and sex and what we would do if we became parents. <laughs> so who better to invite <laughs> to join us in this conversation <laughs> than Senior Parliamentary Secretary, <laughs> Mr. Eric Chua! Hey! Oh, hello, oh, hello, hello. 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 Yes, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. But uh, I must clarify, no, why, why, why do you say who better man than who me? Who better? Yeah. Yeah. Who better exactly. man? Yeah. Yeah. Which part of the statement you just first I don't know. Uh, Ministry, uh, social family okay. development, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the porn lah. <Yeah. laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did mention that you were senior parliamentary secretary. Uh -huh. And we've talked to a lot of like ministers of state, mm -hmm. ministers, mm -hmm. but not a senior parliamentary secretary. Right, right, so, right. Oh, you're all first. Yeah. Oh, am I the first? You are. Oh, right, right. Anyway, uh, there are only three like, currently. Oh, really? Uh? Yeah. Why? Right. Myself, Yam oh, only got three head count. and Rahayu. <laughs> so what does a senior parliamentary secretary Well, do? we do have a role in parliament. So as the name suggests, uh, when parliament parliamentary questions are being filed by MPs and then if uh, ministries receive them and then they are not quite clear what the nuancing or what mm. angle uh, they are coming from is and then I will, it would be my duty to check in with them to say uh, what exactly they are asking about because right. you, you want meaningful conversations to take place in parliament. Right. So you don't want people to talk in parallel, you know, uh, you know across, you know, I see. and right. not meeting each other. Okay, okay, okay. So it's like like the emissary sometimes. Well, That's you know, a great <laughs> name for, yeah. <laughs> I had a very, I had much worse. <laughs> what is that, man? Delivery boy. <laughs> mail, mail man. Clarify la. <laughs> Yo, delivery boy doesn't clarify with you. Uh. Yeah, is this the order you want? Mm -hmm. Is this what you really I like? See, I see, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now uh, that we got that out of the way, uh, let's just get down to the conversation that right. we yeah. want to have. Mm. Okay, so yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had our fair share of uncomfortable conversations on this show. Right. And we hear that you want to emphasize on the importance of having regular conversations on tough topics, yep. namely between parents and children. Mm -hmm. I guess my first question is, mm -hmm. has MSF or maybe you mm -hmm. identified something that may have translated into a tangible problem into Singapore society? Well, you see, last year we celebrated the year of um, SG families, oh, right? I thought we were so, going to go Zodiac. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, why, yeah, yeah. why are we going Zodiac? <laughs> <It's like> SG50s. <laughs> <No, yeah>. uh, <laughs> and, and then we actually had a lot of buzz about, you know, how we can strengthen Singapore families. But I think there's also a slice where we can, uh, you know, talk about Singapore families having some of those conversations that we need to have. But perhaps because of how we are Asian, how we are Singaporean, we don't really have these conversations because we are shy. And also because of my work in the NCPR, can you do the full wording here? <laughs> and the NCPR really looks at uh, youth offending. Right? right. So on all right. indices, youth, youth offending, we have, we have done quite well mm. uh, in the past few years. But one of those indices or indicators that have really climbed up, particularly in the years 2018 through 2021, mm. when the numbers uh, kept rising, um, was the phenomenon of youth sex offending. Mm. Right. And we do remember a, a, a spate of news, uh, you yes. know, that were being covered right. about, you know, uh, campus uh, sex crimes, about upskirt videos right. involving young men. So actually, I, I've gone on to uh, ask my MSF colleagues, can you arrange for me to speak to a few of the sex offenders themselves? Right. Oh, wow. And I did. And I spent more than an hour each with each of them, young men. From very varied backgrounds. These are rehabilitated offenders. These oh. are going through rehabilitation. Right. Some of them have estranged relationships with their family members, as one might possibly expect. Some of them have uh, very poor uh, social networking and support, so they don't have many friends and, and all that. But one of them do have quite usual relationships with people around him. But one consistent point that really popped up each time I spoke to each of them, uh, the three of them, was the fact that all of them were so-called addicted to pornography. How did you coax them into understanding slash admitting slash believing that they are addicted to pornography? Yeah, were they upfront about it? Or? I didn't have to say anything. They just volunteered this information on their own because I think all of them knew, eyes wide open, okay. right. that, that they were, you know, uh, perhaps addicted to pornography. I mean, you sort of know, right, when you're addicted to something, that you can't quite uh, use something else as coping mechanism, for instance, as a regulation I don't know, mechanism. Though. <laughs> no, no. I feel like <laughs> no, but I feel like pornography where is a slight grey area. Like for example, a lot of sexologists and experts mm. they come out and say like mm. you know masturbation is mm. normal, healthy, right? Even mm. yeah, I don't know though about that. Okay, no, let's not. Oh no, recently a lot of young men like they DM me about their relationship and stuff, and then right. I realized a lot of them are 
it's more addicted to masturbation mm. than to than addicted to pornography. Is it the vehicle? Oh. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. So if you wanna you wanna masturbate, yeah, you watch porn. Mm. So are you addicted to masturbation or are you addicted to porn? So I believe it's masturbation. My my also other mm. concern is mm. that this is a common thread amongst them, but right. maybe it is a common thread amongst men in general and they just happen so to be three that men. that is what exactly I'm worried about. And to John's point, are we able to cerebrally just deconstruct and then unpack some of these parts? Mm. Is it really uh, unlinked, as you said? So if you think right. about it, actually, uh, the way of... Uh, why why do you even uh, masturbate for the matter? And why do you even go to pornography to to really heighten that, that, that mm. whole experience? Mm. It's only... It's, Sometimes a conversation about uh, self-regulation, right? Are you able to rely on um, healthy mechanisms to really relieve stress, for instance? The, my worry is that, you know, this is more pervasive mm. than it is. What we see, what I've heard with the three cases, the three young men that I spoke to, perhaps it's just the tip of the iceberg. And you know that actually the iceberg, a large part of it is actually underwater, 90% or more. Mm. And what I'm worried about and why I want to start this conversation is exactly it, you know, that I think it probably affects more men than what is manifest. You do want this conversation to be started and we all know, like we're all men here in this in this room of four of <laughs> us, right? That uh, we all have our egos, right? Rarely, oh, Jared though. Jared, mm, really. He's really yeah, a hell of a guy. <laughs> hell of a guy. It's negative ego. <laughs> we yeah, would rarely true. have this, you know, uh, thing that we will say, okay, we, we have a problem. Mm. We wouldn't. We wouldn't. We might know it, but we wouldn't volunteer this information mm. out in the open. We might suspect it, but we may yes. not, not even confirm it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So that's why I think uh, I, I wanted to talk to you guys and if you can spread the word about this and and start having a conversation about uh, this issue. Will you then say that there is a right amount of anything? Isn't everything really great? Like I, for example, I'm really glad my dad didn't attempt to teach me about sex and pornography. Oh. But then again, I can't imagine a better way. Right. Because it's not that I didn't learn it at all. I, I learned it through conversations with my yep. friends yep. in school and yep. stuff like that. Did you talk about uh, things with your dad in general? Yes. We're actually very open to each other. It's just... But why out of all no, things that you guys discussed, like that was the one thing that you would... No, that, it like, feels like uh, it feels like to me. Uh, mm. There was nothing worth discussing. Yeah. Uh, but please correct uh, me. Yeah, but please uh, Because, uh, I mean, right now, I think we've reached a level where we need to figure out what are we talking about. Right. Right? Because... Prior to this conversation, or mm. we look at a conversation five years ago, is mm. what is sex? Yeah. Mm. Then after that, you gotta move on mm. to what mm. is safe sex, mm. Mm. which I think is a harder conversation mm. because, like, a I tell you, already, don't have sex, but if you're gonna have sex, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird convo to have. Really. But I think it's a different, yeah. slightly different conversation because essentially here we are talking about pornography, and we, we, we some questions that we should be going through. For instance, is um, did you know that sex uh, in pornography is actually fiction? Yeah. Did you know that whatever perceived realities of uh, consent or, or the lack of it in pornography is actually not the norm? Yeah. And did you know that mutual respect between and intimacy between two consenting adults is actually first and foremost the defining quality of any uh, intimate relationship? Yes. So to some extent, like pornography gives a really warped um, perception of reality that exactly. when people get addicted to, exactly. they get a wrong impression exactly. of what sex is and all about. And if you think about it, you right. know, in your father's era, it came in magazines, it came in DVDs. So it was, it's not so easy to travel. Yeah. So beyond you, John, I mean, it's, it's hard for it to reach 10,000 eyeballs, 10,000 other eyeballs. But mm. today, because it's on our devices, it's on our iPads, on your, mm. on your laptops and everything, it's so easy to get eyeballs, right? Mm. But if you think from the point of, point of view, shut up, la damn. Okay, views. If you can still get views. <laughs> Where's John Paul when you need him? Views. Sorry. Let's do that again. So easy to get views. Uh -huh. If you think from the perspective of the producers themselves, the yeah. the, the the porn producers themselves, they want to get views, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. they will be desperate because they have a lot of competitors. Yeah. And how do they get that? So they make the product more exciting. Mm. And to make the product more exciting, you just have to get be more warped, la, as you said. La. More Push twisted, extreme, more la. perverse, mm. extreme, aggressive, violent. And if you paddle that as reality, how is that going to affect our minds? I guess the three of us at least are talking from a pretty privileged point of view in the sense that like maybe our parents didn't talk to us about sex, but we were able to make that kind of separation yeah. of porn in the sense that, uh, that okay, this is fiction. And that is not how sex is supposed to be. We came out, uh, I would like to say, at least like with a proper understanding yeah. of sex. La. Yes. Yes. But I guess not everyone has that yeah. privilege mm. or like kind of that kind of whether it's your your social circle or whatever kind of guiding you or your own research or your own self-motivation. But people don't reach that conclusion and that's the kind of uh, yeah. people you are trying to So the whole process of the three of you getting to where you are now, actually it's not a game, not, not quite by design. 
right? Mm. A bit of it is by game of chance, right? So it depends on who Pretty you much. mix with, who, who your social circles were, mm. what they were saying to you about what they see as well. So imagine if you're, you don't have much of a social, social circle, you d- imagine you don't have much of a so- social circle that adopts pro-social and healthy coping habits. So they'd be telling you that, oh, this is good or, or, or whatever. Yeah. So you might end up in a very different place. So we kind of don't want to leave that to chance. And, and actually parents right. can have a lot of, um, can ha- have a big role to play in right. this whole process. In my DMs and in my wife DMs, we get a lot of like, we, we un-agony or mm. we, we try and yeah. like, guide right. the young couples that, right. that DM us, right? And many of the guys, to be honest, are, are reliant on masturbation mm. <clears throat> to the point whereby they are unable to have a real Mm. Uh, physical intimacy with their partners. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so I do see that as a problem, to be yep. very honest. Mm. And it's not a matter of helping him learn about the porn industry, is, is very much scripted. I'm not sure knowing that helps versus knowing the enforcement of it. Mm. You know, well, well, I'm not so sure about the enforcement of it. I'm not, I'm not so sh- also not sure that the whole point is about knowing that in the first place, right, but right, it's right. also knowing about the alternatives. So if what, why am I doing this? What act? is an alternative for masturbation and porn? Well, you have to actually figure out for yourself because right. each of us is different, right? For some of us, it could be just going to a, a, a real good workout, right? Like no fight, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not the yeah. same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. It's like, oh, you really like pizza, but you need to lose weight. You know, you can try lettuce. It's not the same. Different <laughs> different strokes for different folks. I know you're, you're going to laugh yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the immature one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And John Paul, he's not no, here today. So, so what I'm trying to understand is yes. that are you trying to say, are you advocating for moderation <laughs> and about self-regulation? Yes. It's about management. It's about literacy, about what the porn is all about. And it's about us having our own sort of mechanisms mm. yeah, in place. Yeah, okay, so, so as a parent... Because you, I think we mentioned, and it's a little bit ambiguous and vague at the moment. But you talked yep. about parents needing to have to speak to your, to your kids about this this issue. Yep. So as a parent, how do you envision yourself yeah. or your or your, um, your wife and yourself speaking to your to your son about? And how you the envision beast? your in that same breath? How would you envision your child to react to? So it's gonna be awkward, right? And uh, to be truthful, I've also done some a little, a little bit of homework like, about how, oh. how we can do this. Mm. So I don't think we have to tackle it all at once. So don't think of it as one single big conversation that you need to have. Like, much you know, your son is going to get married and, and all that. Yeah. Like. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So break it into bite-sized conversations. And I, as I said, you know, first of all is to adapt the conversation to be age-appropriate. So you have a kid who okay. is, say, between 8 to 12, still in primary school. Mm. You might not want to be too intense with the details, graphics and, and, and all. So just talk in general terms. Just like how you would with uh, in a conversation with uh, your kid uh, talking about the birds and the bees, right? Mm. As they're older, I think it's okay to have a little bit more details in the conversations. I think recently there was a Google study, study um, that talked about young people having devices. Globally, the starting age for most youngsters having devices is 10. But in Singapore, that age is lower. That age is 8. Mm. So you sort of in a way, know when the starting point can possibly be. Yeah. Right. So even if they don't actively seek out the material, some of the, sometimes it's you served get, to you. Yeah, it's mm. served to you in advertisements or, or whatnot. So so you might want to vary the conversations that you're having with your little ones according to the age. So back to the other point I made about you know when do you start talking about such com- such topics? Maybe when you are driving, so you don't really need to have direct eye contact, right. or maybe yeah. as you are going for just a walk or something, but you don't really need to Basically, have that right. very intense. That's a primary thing to right. do and you're yeah. not yes. this is a secondary yeah, 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 yes. yeah. but don't do stuff like pottery <laughs> <laughs> maybe 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 yeah, you yeah, yeah. Your... <laughs> some reference to movies eh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> ghost I think it's important to let your kid you know and, and in addition to the topic about pornography it's good to also establish some mm. uh, like a no judgement zone with mm. them yeah. Like it's not you just make it clear to them that it's not like yeah. I'm pointing fingers at you that yeah. I know that you are right. watching porn or whatnot. But look, we just want to have a conversation about this. Yeah. And it's okay to have such conversations. Where where I feel with no judgment zones, right? Is that yeah. it ends at the parent. It ends mm. at the child. So when the child asks back, so do you and mom have sex? Mm. So are you watching porn? Do you masturbate? That's where mm. the parents withdraw. Mm. And you have to be honest with them. La. So mm. you, I, I think we can answer all those questions that you Because the mentioned. difficult conversation goes both ways. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And yeah. you have to let the kid know that wow. I know you feel awkward. Actually, so do I. But I think it's a necessary conversation to have. I guess what you're saying is like, you're trying to normalize the things that are typically uh, uncomfortable yeah. to speak about. La. Because like, what we want to do is to have that conversation continue yeah. and not have the young one or the kid ha- having to deal with some of these difficult issues mm. alone. 
seek or answers elsewhere. seek out answers mm. or seek out information elsewhere. Because mm. right. that is more or less left to chance. Right. I, I think a lot of the issue is that the, the standardization and consistency of what we're teaching our kids, right? Because, for example, if we look at the biology of things, it's easy yep. to standardize those things yep. because that happens in schools. Yep. Yep. But when it comes to the social aspect of sex, yep. which I, I don't know if it's happening in schools today, mm. um, and maybe not, I think a lot of it is down to the parents to do it, right? Yes, exactly. In in every job that you see in the world or even in Singapore, like you need to get qualifications for it, you need to study for it and all this. But the most important job in the world, which is parenthood yep. or parenting, there's no cost for it no one and so there's a widely varied consistency of parenting and what is being taught to our kids so especially with like the aspect of socialness in sex right yep like how do we overcome that do you think that's something that MOE can kind of take on or is that something that we just need like, to like parent well, teach by your create curriculum well first of all I think that not all problems have to be beginning and solved in MOE yeah of course I, mm. I like the part where you say that actually there's a role for parents I, I widen that there's a role for the community there's a role for the extended family as mm. well there's the point you made about diversity right so we have uh, so many varied ways of par different parents going at it from different angles taking different approaches now, that is a strength or that is a weakness. To me, that's a strength. Okay. Because all of us that are different to begin with, I applaud that, uh, you know, diversity of approaches that okay. we can have. And I think it's um, also not a matter of whether there's curriculum or not. Because okay. a lot of it is just about being human. I mean, I, I've, we have had so much emphasis on credentials. I, I think it's... Um, Time, sometimes we need to home and center mm. ourselves and then look, just center on being human. Mm. And it's really about having a comfortable and having a, 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 a no judgment kind of a conversation with our loved ones in our lives. It's as simple as that. I think that's the, the core message that I really want to send out to our parents. So oh. I understand you're saying that it's not a government's responsibility, but what are the resources that MSF has put out there for, like for conversations as such? Well, I think there are plenty of resources out there. So if you can uh, just Google Families for Life, I think there are programs that they run to help families about uh, provide pro tips about how you can start a conversation, uh, a difficult conversation with your kids at home. Right. right. And you can also Google Touch Cyber Wellness because they have also programs to help parents start meaningful conversations with their little ones. And actually quite interesting, they also have a deck of cards, uh, much like the, a, card of, uh, a, a game of Uno card games. Uh. Right. And they can, they can help guide both the parents and the kids to start a conversation Maybe start with the easy, easier questions. Also, oh, you play right. your, your, with your, your kids. The yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. A series of leading questions that will must maybe, buy. Uh. No la, free la. Free la. Yeah. 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 That makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. We love free shit. So get in touch with them. And, <laughs> You're no uh, children. You sit down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that any you way. You you voluntarily <laughs> are child. Then your child's IC number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're talking about like mm. the touch cyber awareness. There's a specific like pornography program or module. like module even <laughs> oh wow it's called it there, <laughs> okay, it's a okay, really okay, big okay. problem for the government guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited to scan this yay so just I for some context um, John has received what looks like uh, an image of one of the cards from uh, the what's it called the touch we uh, cyber wellness oh, cyber wellness yeah. okay okay so this one talks about different forms of uh, explicit content slash pornography which one of it is is sexting so th there's a QR code here, of which you scan, then you learn, okay, is sexting illegal? What do you think? No. No. What the suspense? <laughs> I have to read lah. <laughs> As you have a lot of things, it's only illegal. Yes! Can... What? what? It is illegal? If, it's, if the person is below 16. Oh! That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. But what if both of them are below 16? Romeo and Juliet. Then no? why Cannot. are they doing this? Don't then, do it. They should talk yeah. to their parents first. Right, okay. So someone is sharing my personal photos. What can I do? Right. Mm. And the first one, don't blame yourself. Oh, oh okay. Very, yeah. Hey. Very forward, very forward. Props yeah, to the people yeah, who wrote yeah, this Very thing. progressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I still want to sext, is there any way to be safer while sexting? Okay. This is not oh, bad. Government do one, ah. Social service agency, yeah. Oh, nice. yes, oh yes, yes, but yes, very yes, good. Yeah, yeah, very, very no, but this is a good material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Stay as anonymous as possible. Try and keep your face or other identifying characteristics out of your photos. Great tip. Use secure apps. Oh, really very did, good. Did they put the secret chat so for example, you, if you really need to sex, like, they will tell you don't do it. Like, okay, I guess they need to tell you that. For Android, you can use Signal and Signal, you can disable screenshots. Oh, it's just a huge deterrent. That's really useful. Set pictures to expire after a certain yeah. number of minutes or seconds. Turn off location service to make sure your photos can't be See. traced back to you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, I really didn't think of that. Okay, so. okay, okay. Yeah. 
Well, the person that wrote is a master sexter. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Props, really props. They cover a lot of weird angles. Like my boyfriend slash girlfriend keeps asking me to, I like how they say girl slash boyfriend also. Yeah. You know? Very mm-hmm. progressive. Yeah. Keeps asking me to send sex <laughs> when I don't want to, what should I do? So how to reject yeah. wow. sexual advances. Sex is a creative word. I also create now. I know. And then there are resources to call if you. Okay. 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 So, yeah. Speaking we, of pornography, yes. how, <laughs> great segue. Then. How did we all first watch our first pornography? I'm surprised we haven't shared that on the podcast yet. Yeah. So I was primary four. I think this is a very common thing. Like it's, it's, the, it's the computer lab yeah, of man, school. Computer oh, lab of school. Oh, yeah. Really not with firewalls even then. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on the, the 90s, guy. man. Right. Yeah. So uh, I was just like doing my own thing. I don't know, drawing something on paint or something. Then like. <laughs> Then there was like a, a group of guys and they're like, hey, Jared, come over, come over. And then they, I I go over yeah. and they they part the red sea and then it's just a screen and it's- A naked woman. A naked man. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your friends. Okay, okay, okay. 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 That's, that's, yeah, because, because that's I guess at that point, like they, they really didn't know what they were looking at. Right, like, right, you know, right, it's right, just right, a yeah. naked man. It's not for sexual gratification. It's right. for it's for the love. Curiosity. It's for yep. the funny. It's a naked man holding his penis. Yeah. Oh, uh, in a rather large funny. one at that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And then- We didn't need that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so you still remember what I it looks like? I still remember that image. It was a top down, like, yeah. It really- bur- huh, it really like that. <laughs> no, like camera like that. Yeah, last time I got no selfie cam. I guess technically that was my first uh, exposure to porn, but that was actually- Questioning your sexuality. No, it's- Sexual awakening. <laughs> no, it's where I realized that porn was a thing. Oh. Mm. Uh, and then I went to go find it myself yeah. <laughs> on my own family computer. And yeah, I didn't know how clear history last time. Oh, <laughs> that's horrible. No, yeah. the worst part is that last time, right? Like once you go to these sites, right? Suddenly you get pop-ups. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, the amount ad spent for adult friend finder was made. Yeah. Like there was that era. Yeah, <laughs> no, the first time you saw you were mind blown, like like find women near and then your neighborhood yeah, was yeah. there. Were like, they were like, yeah, someone huh? in Bordeaux wants to have sex with you, like, no, me. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. they say, oh, oh, this is white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you say your name, eh. Hey, no. Daniel. No, yeah. that's me. No, la. that's me. No, no, have, no have singles in your area. <laughs> But I still remember like, I couldn't explain why there were just so many pop-ups. And then I would just be like, oh yeah, we couldn't virus law, we couldn't virus. Cause it's the family computer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Family computer, those were a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's right in the living room. There's a, there's yeah. a group, they were going, what do you mean family computer? <laughs> it's shared in the living room yeah. and everyone takes their turn. Like that's why PC is a thing. Cause last time it was just C. Mm. So then, uh, yeah. first, uh-huh. first porn no experience. So my first porn, uh, <laughs> it wasn't actually porn. So I was just like super curious because I, I started like um, fiddling with myself. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like young, like-, like Oh, I think, you fiddle first. Like I think mm. P5. Mm. Right. Yeah. I used to think I fiddle first. Mm. No, cause like you're just curious what you like, you yeah. touch that and you're like, eh, why got sensation? Mm. And then like, okay. And then you get the little like, spasm without anything coming out, yeah, you know, yeah, at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to That's me, weird. right, that whole thing wasn't a sexual experience. To me, right. it was just a me and myself, like, Massage. like hacking, hacking the world, you know, like hacking my brain to be able to like feel a bit of pleasure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then later on, I realized like, oh shit, like um, when my friend gave me a book for my birthday, my, my 12th birthday, <laughs> it was the big book of everything wow. by DK, right? Mm-hmm. Is it educational okay, book, yeah. the red color one. <clears throat> and then, I found myself like skipping to like sex or like vagina or like whatever. Yeah, that's what people used to do with encyclopedias actually. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing is that everything was like very like sciencey. So I mm. thought like, okay lah, got the family computer, right? Mm. And score it. Let's just <laughs> type. But I don't know how to type. I didn't know it was called porn. So I searched for vagina. Right. And then go They'll to get you there. image, right? It and it's literally yeah. just, <laughs> it's diagrams. Uh, yeah. You get the, you get drawings of it. You get the, the woman's thing, the you get the womb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is supposed to, cause I, I think I overheard friends talking about like how they went to the internet and search for stuff. So like, right, this right. was me. And I was like, wow, they, they get off on this kind of diagram. <laughs> uh. How and misguided. Then, yeah. And so then after that, I would just type like sex story maybe. And then uh, it will be like written prose. And then I'll just uh, read fan it. Fiction. And then I'll be like, oh, why, why are a guy and girl doing this? Oh, this is so weird. So then I give up. Yeah. Yeah. Then only later on, like I asked my friend, like, hey, how come like you so addicted to this? And then he says, just go to this website. Just give you a link. Right, right, right. Yeah, just give me a link. <laughs> change your life. And my life was changed forever. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, we've had some uh, pretty heavy conversations. So yep. let's lighten it a bit by mm-hmm. getting to know you a bit better. You made your political debut in 2020. Uh-huh. But before that, you were actually in the SCDF for 17 years. Oh, yeah. wow. wow. The life-saving force. That's right. So what are some of the more memor- memorable emergencies you responded to? What's a crazy story right, from the SCDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so what are some crazy stories that you have? <laughs> well, a lot of people would think that, oh, it must be the huge fires that you fight. It must be the the, the largest uh, factory fires that you have fought and all that. But I, I've, in my opinion, it's, it's always the easier ones to go for those big incidents. But the toughest ones, I feel, are the ones, well, like you said, the crazy ones, are the ones that really leave the deepest impressions. And there was actually a scream that was left etched in my memory. Now, this was a case I attended to when I was in Woodlands. That was my first posting ever as a young, um, you know, uh, SCDF officer. We get a text from 95 and the text reads, Human Torch. Oh, wait, what? I was like, oh. what? Human Torch? A man on fire or a person so, on fire? So I didn't know. La. So we went to one of those, um, you know, HDB flats, uh, masonette units, two levels. Yeah. The gates were locked. The wooden doors, the main doors were, were left ajar, left open. And then there was this middle-aged woman who came to the, the gate. I could see that she was a little bust. So I, it's quite clear she had alcohol. Mm. But later I found out that actually because she had a bottle in her hands. But that's not a bottle of alcohol, it's a bottle of kerosene. So I think she must have had Drink it. some. Oh right. my God. She poured some over herself. I don't think she was in the right uh, mental state. She slammed the wooden door shut. Um... She obviously lit herself and then the scream that ensued as she ran upstairs to the missile unit that will forever stay in my mind. I literally froze for two seconds, me mm. being the rookie that, that, that I was. Yeah, not yeah. Bad, yeah, I think. And then everybody just, okay, let's break window, break, break door mm. and everything. So we got in, we rushed up, went to the, uh, uh, we found her in the bathroom. She was dousing herself with uh, oh, the, She's still conscious. She's still conscious. Okay. She was uh, crying and all, and uh, we brought the paramedics in, packaged her. She's got quite an extensive burn. Um, fortunately, she passed on, uh, we know, I, I know, later in the, I think a few days later in hospital. Right. Yeah. That was my first harrowing so-called experience. Um, That's enough to quit the job. No, yeah. no, that, that got me thinking, right? right. Mm. So you always see, you know, the, the part of Singapore that's uh, bright and shiny, all of us are uh, good families and, and, mm. and, and whatnot. But you, you never quite knew that there were people, I mean, unless it comes before your eyes, people with um, conditions. I didn't quite figure out what conditions you had. And that along with other incidents uh, also got me thinking about, you know, um, um, the, should I say, the, the underbelly of Singapore society. Mm. Actually, my epiphany after all these uh, years uh, is this. Uh, there is no shame uh, for any society to have an underclass. But if that underclass throughout time uh, is the same group of families, mm. that's where I think it really reflects the moral fiber of our society. And that's, that's a no-go if generation after generation is going to be the same folks who are there living in the rental flat families, mm. who are yep. there. Socially the mobile. Huh? And, yep. and they don't shift, they don't move. Mm. And that's where I actually, I'm very happy where I am in the, in the ministries that mm. I'm in because I work a lot with the communities. I work a lot with, uh, you know, the, the underprivileged families. Mm. And uh, that keeps me going. Yeah. From SCDF, then go and become MP. How was that? <laughs> well, I never really set out to want to be where I am today. So, I mean, the question was popped one of these days. Lah. So, would you want to have a chance to uh, serve the community? I mean, it never oh. was in my mind. So, to, it's like, so, I'm not serving now, is it? To, like to, to, <laughs> to be, what, what did you do yesterday? So, so actually, I also did a lot of uh, community work when I when I started mm. uh, when I started my career. And I fell in love with the whole idea of comm service. So, right. I started with simple things like doing box size classes with persons with intellectual disabilities. Oh, and that was very meaningful because a couple of times we had to go overseas on vacation and whatnot. When we came back, Brandon, one of the kids at this class, mm. actually asked me, Eric, where were you? Oh. Mm. We missed you. Oh. Yeah. They'll wife, get you, man. Yeah. Mm. So, so that really They'll get you. caught me. La. I mean, really. <laughs> Changed my entire career. So one day when, they, when, when I was asked, oh, would you like to um, you know, have a slightly larger stage? I yeah, gave it a thought. I dis- discussed with my wife. Because it's not oh, was your wife's first alone decision. My wife's first de- first reaction was actually she gave a very considered and uh, a very slow reply, and we had a continued conversation because we knew one conversation wouldn't settle it. Yeah. So we talked continuously for mm. several weeks. Yeah. 
and oh. and and she at the end of it she said well I'll support you actually even now you know I'm I'm away from the family so much actually she's um, acing everything mm. with my three-year-old son and all uh, taking care of family now even also thinking of my parents because my parents now don't text me already anymore they give up oh I mean, they, uh, my, my parents will just text me now <laughs> so they just, <laughs> just, just text my my wife and she settles their IT issues how come I click Facebook this one doesn't come out and right. she'll be the ones settling for oh, that so I'm super <laughs> superwoman grateful mm. for, for what she's doing not because I, I know that she's, she's gonna watch this and I say this but I think that too no shout out to her anyway. shout out to you yeah. superwoman <laughs> So you went from 24 hours on, 48 hours off to like- 24 7, 24 7, 7, 7 full yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were mentioning like being an involved parent and having conversations with like, having regular conversations with your kids about uncomfortable topics, right? Yeah. And with your son being like kind of three years old, right? Yep. yep. And if you in your current capacity are stuck to the 24 sevens and all yep. that, do you mm. think you're able to have those conversations or like make time to be able to, you know, practice what you preach lah, in a way. I think what I'm trying to do is to make sure that I start by making sure that my 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 son knows that I'm a close friend. Close friend with boundaries. Because yeah. there, there are some things, some, I mean, there are times where he acts up, he doesn't do things that mm. we think is within uh, our expectations or, you know, not what a good kid would do. We would tell him, I would tell him off, even though mm. it means that we have to take some time out to sort of discipline him. So yeah. with boundaries. No, do it, please. Yes, my God. yes, yes. <laughs> but he has to feel comfortable with you as a, as a person, as a friend. Mm. So what I do is I try to ring friends. So I try to get home, hopefully, um, every day uh, by 9.30 p.m. Because every time he comes, he sees me uh, coming back, he'll be, quite excited Aww. so I would spend half an hour just read some bedtime stories sing together with him or just wrestle him in bed that kind of thing I think those are essential because you then know that I mean the the two human beings would then know that okay there's somebody I can play with wrestle with mm. trust I think that, that confidence is uh, is important. Mm. And I think the difficult conversations doesn't have to form like the, the main part of it. That's probably just a sliver mm. of it. But much of your interaction, 90%, 80%, is about building that, you know, that connection as fellow human beings. I guess you're planting right. the seeds lah. Exactly. In a way. Because yep. like, you can't like say you have half an hour with him and then you sit down and like, Son. Let's talk about porn, <laughs> son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I guess like next time, and there's obviously going to be family dinners and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Where that's where you are probably intending to... Yep. Why am I speaking? <laughs> but that's where your strategy will be. <coughs> la, oh, when you have uh, dad and son bonding time. La. Yeah. Father and son bonding yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by the Ministry of Social and Family Development. So big thank you to them. And of course, SPS Eric Chua. Whoa. SPS. <laughs> For the parents watching, we <laughs> hope that this conversation has encouraged you to start having regular conversations on difficult topics with your children. Mm. For mm. more information, you can head down to the links below. So thank you for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do you feel scared being on this episode that we are majority talking about uh, pornography and masturbation? <laughs> Who forced you to do this? <laughs> no, but I think it's an important conversation that we, we need to have in society. So why not? Yeah. Wow. Why not you, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Let's just it, do it there. It yeah. needs to be said, lah, right? We yep. can skirt around it because exactly. I think it's the same reason that yeah. many of these conversations are not happening because right. parents, like what is expected of MPs, are skirting around it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, good job, Jay. Cool. Very brave man. Bring them out to the open. Take one for the country. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>